Biomechanics principle number three, the concept of the acetabulum pedis. To help understand the very complex subtalar joint, it's helpful to understand the concept of the acetabulum pedis. In 1818, Antonio Scarpa coined the term acetabulum pedis. He apparently saw an analogy between the subtalar joint and the hip joint. For him, the acetabulum of the foot consisted of the articular surface of the navicular, the spring ligament, and the anterior and probable middle facets of the subtalar joint. These structures made a socket, an acetabulum, in which sat the head of the talus. To bring this analogy further are these sketches. We all appreciate the hip joint. There's an acetabulum of the pelvis and the femoral head sits inside. In the foot is an acetabulum pedis, the acetabulum made up of the structures mentioned previously, and inside that acetabulum of the foot sits the head of the talus. At the hip joint, the ball rotates within the socket three-dimensionally. In the foot, the socket rotates around the ball three-dimensionally. I mentioned in a previous talk that the subtalar joint is not a ball and socket, but it shares certain features. At the hip, it's complete, un, a complete unrestricted full range of motion ball and socket. In the subtalar joint, in the acetabulum pedis, the apparent free ball and socket joint is a down and in and up and out. Plantar flexion internal rotation, dorsal flexion external rotation that gives functionality very similar to a complete ball and socket. And the calcaneal lengthening osteotomy demonstrates this concept quite well. In fact, the calcaneal lengthening osteotomy, concept originally described by Dilwyn Evans, is, in my opinion, the Salter osteotomy of the acetabulum pedis. We would all agree that the x-ray of the hip on the upper left has acetabular dysplasia because it has a low center edge angle of Weiberg. There's no subluxation, there's no dislocation, but it's a dysplastic acetabulum. The femoral head is not well covered. So if we draw the lines on the acetabulum pedis, on the sketch on the lower left, we can again see a low center edge angle. The Salter osteotomy rotates the acetabular fragment three-dimensionally, anteriorly and laterally, to correct the acetabular dysplasia and correct the center, center edge angle of Weiberg three-dimensionally. The calcaneal lengthening osteotomy similarly rotates the acetabulum pedis around the head of the talus three-dimensionally, down and in from its up and out position, and corrects the center edge angle three-dimensionally in all planes. 